Hi there, this is Dr. John Bergsman from the St. Paul Center for Biblical Theology and the Franciscan University of Steubenville. And this is Scripture and the Internet, the show where we answer your questions about the Bible. So let's jump right in. When Frito Fermi uh, writes in and asks, in the book of Matthew, John said it was he who needs to be baptized by Jesus, but Jesus replied, let it be so now to fulfill all righteousness. My question is, what righteousness was Jesus talking about? Fantastic question. Um, when we read in the Dead Sea Scrolls, we find that Jews contemporary with Jesus were expecting uh, the fulfillment of the prophets to occur at any time, and this would be an era in which God would usher in what they called salvation and righteousness. By righteousness, they meant God showing himself to be just or showing himself to be righteous. The two words uh, are the same in Hebrew. Again, showing himself to be just or righteous by tying up all the loose ends of the prophecies in the Old Testament, all the unfulfilled oracles, all the unfulfilled typologies, premonitions, and prefigurements of the salvation that was to come of the Messiah. So when Jesus says we need to fulfill all righteousness, he means we need to tie up all the loose ends and we need to make sure that all the prophecies are fulfilled. Well, prophecy also happened through typology, which were images in the Old Testament narratives that were intended to be fulfilled by the Messiah. And one of those images was the washing and anointing of the son of David. We see that in 1 Kings chapter one, where before he began his reign, Solomon went to the Gihon Spring and was washed and anointed and then became king. And he was washed and anointed by the priest and the prophet. Well, that is what Jesus is fulfilling at his baptism. John is both priest through his father Zechariah and obviously prophet, and he officiates as Jesus is washed with water and anointed with the Spirit and then begins his reign over the kingdom of God, because that's what he begins to preach after his baptism. Repent, for the kingdom of God is at hand. Virginia Janiech, uh, she writes, why does the chest wound on Christ appear on his right side instead of the left on my crucifix and in many pictures of him? Uh, Virginia, this is a really curious question, but if you do the research on it, you find out that for whatever reason, the traditional position or the traditional portrayal of Christ in Catholic art is having the wound on the right side, which might seem kind of counterintuitive because we know the heart is on the left. But nonetheless, Catholic artistic tradition is to portray the wound on the right, although some artists like Rubens uh, were a minority report and would put the wound on the left. And so we don't know from Scripture which side of our Lord was pierced, um, but the dominant tradition is to portray it on the right, and you get this minority report of portraying it on the left. Okay, Ricardo Ago writes in and says, how does the resurrection of the body and embalming work for us as Catholics when we die? Yeah, fantastic question. Dr. Scott Hahn just wrote a book about this, and I'll put it down in the comments below and you can check it out. I believe it's called Hope to Die, all about the treatment of the body after death. And basically, Ricardo, some kinds of embalming are entirely appropriate for us as Catholics. I mean, we're not going to mummify our bodies like the ancient Egyptians did. That would be disordered. But some embalming is good because care and respect for the human body is very deeply entwined with the Catholic tradition. So washing and anointing the body after death uh, and some, some forms of embalming show respect for the dead person, first of all, and also witness to our faith that God uses and sanctifies matter including the matter of our physical body. And thirdly, the care of the body after death and then uh, giving the body a Christian burial is a testimony to our hope in the resurrection of the body 
our belief that the body will be raised up and reunited with our souls one day. We know that God can recreate the body for those whose bodies are burned or destroyed, etc., and obviously our bodies decay, but it's a symbolic testimony to our hope in the resurrection. Dare to Know writes in, what makes you think we have free will? First thing that makes me think that we have free will is that the Bible tells us we are made in the image and the likeness of God, and God has free will. Indeed, he is the freest of all beings, and so it would not make sense if God made us in his image, but in fact, we were robots whose actions were predetermined. Secondly, God made us for a loving relationship with him. We know that God is love, as St. John the Apostle tells us. And love is always free by its very nature. Love cannot be forced. Love cannot be coerced because then it is not love. So love presumes freedom on the part of the person who does love. And God commands us to love him with all our heart and all our soul, and all our might, as we read in Deuteronomy 6 and many other places as well. So if we are to love God, that implies that we have free will and can freely choose to do so. Atheist materialists frequently take the position that we are determined, um, that all our actions are predetermined by chemical uh, interactions and natural laws. And so in the worldview of people like Daniel Dennett and Richard Dawkins, there is no love in their worldview. There is only the impression of love or the illusion of love. Because, for example, for Dawkins, all of our actions are simply predetermined by our selfish genes, as he famously put it. So that is a world devoid of love and indeed devoid of good and evil and meaning. That is a very depressing picture of reality and one that I not only refuse to accept, but also I believe can show is completely false. Awesome questions this time. This has been Scripture and the Internet, the show where we answer your questions about the Bible. This has been Dr. John Bergsma from the St. Paul Center for Biblical Theology and Franciscan University of Steubenville. As always, uh, put your comments down below. If you've got questions you would like us to answer in future episodes, you can put them down there. Check out the resources for further reading or study on some of these questions that we put down there also. And as always, please like and subscribe to these shows. Till next time, may God keep you happy and holy.